Good afternoon or good morning, depending on where you're dialing in from. Welcome to the benefits of combining Oracle's EPM and VA Foundation Suite webinar hosted by the ClearLine Group. Um, before we get started, I'd like to cover some housekeeping here. The webinar will last around 45 minutes today, and we should have time at the end for some question and answer. Um, everybody is on mute, um, but at the end we will remute the mute, mute so you can ask questions. Also, during the webinar, on your Microsoft Office Live meeting screen, you should have a button that says Q&A. Feel free to type in any questions that you may have, and we'll answer at the end of the webinar. And we will also be monitoring a mailbox out there called info at clearlinegroup.com where you can feel free to send us emails as well, and we will monitor that as well. We're recording this webinar for future playback, so you can forward this off to um, your colleagues within your organization. Um, and with that, I will, I will briefly go through the agenda, and we'll kick it off here. Well, we're going to go introductions in a second, and then we will go through what is called a business cycle within organizations, and more specifically, how that business cycle is run within the finance organization. We'll also provide a brief overview of Oracle's Enterprise Performance Management, or EPM, suite, as well as Oracle's Business Intelligence Foundation suites. Well, then we'll go through some of the benefits, which is the, the way this webinar was built, of combining both EPM and BI with some real-world examples and a demonstration of the benefits of combining both. We'll then also talk about how to achieve those benefits, followed up by a question and answer. So from an introduction perspective, my name is John Schmidt. I'm Vice President of Business Development here at ClearLine Group. I have more than 20 years' experience in technology sales and pre-sales experience. I've worked for organizations such as Siebel, Hyperion, NCR, and Teradata. And then taking us through the crux of the webinar today and the demonstration will be David Abitangelo, who's our practice lead here at ClearLine Group. David has more than 15 years of BI experience. And probably the most unique thing about Dave is Dave has worked on all three sides of the business intelligence challenges, from the corporate perspective, the consulting, and also working for business intelligence vendors. He's well-versed in BI technology from OBIE all the way to data warehousing, and he's worked in industries from finance all the way through to consumer packaged goods. The webinar today is being hosted by ClearLine Group, and we're a boutique consulting organization that has a rich history in Oracle, Hyperion, Enterprise Performance Management, and Business Intelligence. We're an Oracle Gold Partner, headquartered in Illinois, and our core team has been together for more than 12 years, with backgrounds much like Dave in both the technology and the consulting side of the house with industry experience. We have a breadth of skills all the way from advisory to architecture to implementation, and a key here is we're all full-time employees with a vested interest in making our clients successful. Our mantra here is simple. If our clients are successful, we're successful, and that has led to our success. With that, I will turn it over to Dave Abitangelo, who will take you through the business cycle that organizations are facing today. Hey, thanks a lot, John, and thanks, everyone, for joining the call and taking time out of your day. I'm going to walk through, at a very high level, what we call a business cycle, and this is basically how companies run their business, you know, day in and day out. And there's really three key components to it, uh, the planning, the execution, and then the assessing. And every year, um, in an ongoing manner, you go through developing your strategy, identifying the key initiatives to help you achieve that strategy, and how you're going to measure that strategy. And then you um, push that down into the organization, allocate resources, uh, you modify your processes to make sure that you can execute. And throughout the year, and maybe even, you know, daily and weekly, you're assessing how are we doing as an organization to achieve our goals. You know, as an example, maybe, you know, your strategy might be to this year we want to expand our, you know, our customer base. We're going to target a new segment. And so you identify, you know, are there key new products we need to develop to expand into the segment? Are there marketing campaigns to target towards the segment? And then, you know, what information do we need in the field to actually market to these customers, sell these products, and then over time, we'll start to measure, you know, 
which organizations, which sales organizations were most effective at selling these products. We start to learn um, from our, our best performers how to take those best practices and spread them out to the organization and adjust our plan as well where we're having trouble getting traction in, in that segment. Sounds easy. You know it's not. And a lot of the challenges with executing on a business cycle are related to the use of information. Uh, one, it's lack of information to be able to link your strategy to your plan. So we put a plan in place. We don't necessarily take it all the way down to the little step and say, here's the initiative that are going to help us drive, you know, um, this customer growth or maybe, you know, example, we're going to focus on inventory reduction. Um, how do we tie that high-level goal that everyone's looking at from the top level down, down to the organizations in the field, uh, sales organizations, product organizations, so that they can actually, on a day-to-day -day basis, um, understand how they're tracking to um, their goals specific to reducing inventory. Um, the second challenge around the execution is getting information in people's hands that's actually usable. And by usable, meaning it's, it's accurate, people trust it, and it's available, and also it's easy to navigate through. So I can, on a daily basis, go in there into a system, see analytics, maybe it's embedded in my business processes, that I can actually act on. Meaning I can pick up a phone, I can, I can opt for a product for a customer that I have a likelihood of, of getting acceptance on, or I can shift inventory from one location to another where you know it's, it's faster moving versus one where it's just sitting there for two years. And then the, the final challenge is how do we learn from this and constantly improve? And through that, you know, it's the assessment cycle where we're maybe looking at standard reporting every day or we're looking at, you know, data analysts going in and doing data exploration and trying to find the nuggets of knowledge that help us um, change our process and spread it across the organization. So let's take a second here to talk about how does it relate to the finance function? And historically, typically, we've seen in our customer base, you know, finance is really focused on that planning and assess piece of the business cycle where, you know, finance has helped driving the building of the plan and communication outward and also heavily involved in the measurement of the organization's performance to that plan. But more and more, what we're seeing in our customer base is that finance is now being asked to do more in terms of providing information that's not just financial nature, but um, financial information integrated with other sources of data that people in the field need to know in order to actually um, understand how they're doing and tr to track their plan and also make decisions. And we're seeing this, you know, asking for integration with, with you know, sales information, with product information, and also we're seeing our customers' finance organizations being asked to, you know, push this information out in dashboard and scorecards as well as through um, phones and, and things like that. And it's not just Carolina that sees this. The Association of Accountants and Financial Professionals did a survey called Rising to the Challenge. They put the rep a report out and they found that the three, you know, top challenges for CFO organizations are all tied to the, you know, use, integration, and dissemination of information. So the big challenge is actually streamlining the processes and integrating information into their business processes. And a key component of this was adding business intelligence software. The second thing is becoming more efficient in the management reporting cycle. And again, this goes to the need for finance to take a bigger role in integrating information across multiple data sources and then reporting this out at a more granular level than they've historically been doing. And then finally, it's getting this information in a more real-time or near real-time um, format that end users can, can quickly and easily navigate through and across. Uh, Gartner, who is one of the lead technology and, and business process analysts, also has, you know, seen the changing role of finance. And they did a survey last this year in May. And what they found is that CFOs are more and more involved in the um, support of business intelligence and that business intelligence is really a primary um, 
focus for, for CFOs and, and finance organizations. And the other piece that's interesting is that now 45% of activities report into the CFO, uh, so this is an increasing number, uh, highlighting kind of the need to integrate um, technology and data with the finance function. So I'll take a minute here, we'll talk about Oracle's EPM and BI suites, and then we'll start talking about how the convergence of them and integration drives uh, additional benefits in the finance organization. So I think most of the people on this call are probably already familiar with Oracle's EPM suite, and it is the you know, industry leading suite of applications for managing your, your financial functions. Um, from strategy management to through profitability management, and probably the most commonly used products are, you know, Hyperion Financial Management as well as Hyperion Planning. The EPM suite also includes reporting analytics, and these products are geared really towards integration with the uh, EPM products. But as we see over, um, what's happening now is that with the demands of finance to integrate more data, uh, tools in, in Oracle's BI suite are going to become more and more um, the way they go in terms of integrating data across um, from different sources. So when we talk about Oracle Business Intelligence, again, we're talking about an interesting media enterprise platform for business intelligence uh, with OBIEE in the BI Foundation Suite, and on top of, you know, which this platform, you know, you can build custom analytic applications, uh, custom reporting, as well as Oracle's gone and built package analytic applications for ERP, for CRM, as well as industry-specific analytics, and these are all built using the Oracle platform of OBIEE and, and DeskSpace. The big thing to remember, you know, from a finance perspective and, and the need to start integrating more data in with financial information is that what Oracle's BI Foundation Suite provides is a common access point across your enterprise for all your different data sources and for a broad spectrum of functionality. So you go to one place, use one, one product for doing query analysis to create dashboards, scorecards, uh, to do highly formatted reporting and batch reporting out to tens of thousands of users, as well as for doing analysis with an office and then um, proactively sending out alerts and notifications through um, your browser or email or your mobile phones. So what's the benefit? So we talked earlier about the plan, execute, assess cycle, and really it's the benefits of combining Oracle's EPM with the BI tools is that we are now taking that plan to assess model and we're making it easier to integrate across the phases, across the organization to um, communicate your plan down, have everyone tracking the same strategic measures, as well as providing what we call an integrated analytic workflow so that if I'm out in a field and I'm, I'm trying to manage my inventory, I have logical workflows that I can drill through from a high-level, you know, plan, actually versus budget, budget report, down to a detailed report that's going to let me actually move inventory around, for example. This is going to provide a lower total cost of ownership, you know, through efficiencies of um, reporting, uh, more time spent on analysis, than on putting data together and also pushing this information out to end users as a self-service model. I'm going to walk you through uh, some some screenshots of reporting from GL down to the sub ledger. This is, I know, a challenge for a lot of organizations um, using EP EPM tools alone. Uh, one customer is running, you know, reports from HFM, populating an S-space cube, and then, you know, manually creating a query to access a detailed ledger. And so between the cube and the ledger, there is a lot of reconciliation that has to be done to make sure that the numbers tie at a total account level. level. 
Um, and then there's also a lot of work to pull data into a spreadsheet and then distribute it out. And um, you do it for multiple people, multiple accounts, and it takes a lot of time off of the finance organization. When we brought OBIE into the picture, what we enabled was, you know, a single view where the customer can go into one place, look at their account level um, activity, then drill, easily drill into the journal entry line items to see what the activity was for that specific account for a specific period. And what we've done is we've taken the, the, the need to reconcile out of the, out of the picture, it's automated, and we centralize the rules, and it's now a process where the end user can go in and quickly get the information they need. I'm going to show you just some screenshots. And it's very basic. This customer is in the early phase, and all they really wanted to do was be able to quickly get from my account to my GL detail. And um, the focus here was just getting something that they could get in place quickly and easily and see numbers. And then from here, you know, we'll look at, at you know, enhancing the workflow and, you know, making better, prettier reports. Right now, just getting information quickly is a big win. So this customer comes in, they, they select um, their accounts. They may all look at five or six at a time. That then populates a uh, pivot table. They can select a drop down, select an account. Um, and then once they do, so if I'm looking at an account, you know, 1009, I can click on a cell. I'm going to see a drill to JE detail line item. And when they click on that, it's actually going to quickly generate, uh, this is just a basic HTML report that has all the line item detail tied to that period for that account. And they can scan through that and or, you know, export it to Excel or a pivot table to do more analysis. So it's very basic, but it shows the ability to actually go across data sources and let users actually get the information on their own that they were previously looking to finance to provide for them. A uh, second example is a, cus a customer that uh, had acquired over a period of two years 20 different um, companies. And this was a manufacturer of oil exploration equipment. And so that you can buy everything from toilet paper for the rigs to, you know, $40,000 drill bits from this company, and the challenge they had is that they now had 20 companies with, I think they had 14 different versions of ERPs, and they were trying to look at their inventory um, across the company, and it was basically impossible to do. And what, how this manifested itself is if someone called a location and to buy a drill bit, basically they'd look in their system. If they didn't have it, they didn't make the sale. So we brought the data together with OBIA. They're able to look at it, and... The end result is they're able to look at stock out products, you know, and fulfill them from other locations. Uh, they can look at a holistic view of company to the vendors. So they integrated pricing information, so what the prices they paid across these companies, and they're able to go back to their um, their vendors and say, look, before I looked like a $500,000 company um, that you were selling me product A for a dollar per item. The reality is, as an organization, we did $3 million last year. We paid a price range of, you know, $0.85 cents to $1.10. We want to pay $0.85 cents across the board. So every year when these contracts came up for renewal, they're able to negotiate better pricing um, with their vendors. And then lastly, which was really big in actually reducing inventory, they were able to look at reports for their location that showed their products categorized as, you know, slow-moving, fast-moving, um, hardcore, meaning they hadn't sold in two years, and they were able to look at those hardcore products and look at the same product and find locations where that was a fast-moving product. And they were able to pick up the phone and say, hey, can you take this off my hands and transfer it over there? And knowing that it was going to sell fast and vice versa, they would take products from other companies where they were selling fast and the other place wasn't. Um, and they had a dramatic, you know, decrease in their inventory in the, in the first year, in the first day of this system was in place, it was, uh, they got phone calls from sales guys saying, hey, it's sold 10,000 bucks a product, I went to sell them, I didn't have this ability to look across systems. All right. So I'm going to spend a few minutes, I'm going to do a quick demo for you. I'm not going to spend a lot of time um, in the de demo itself, but um, the things that I want to kind of highlight is that going back to the role of the finance organization, how it's changed, and you're asking to do a lot more data integration and reporting on information that goes beyond just the financial realm. Um, I'm going to focus on doing a demo that is basically going to show you um, 
integration of data. I'm not going to have a contrived business story. I think when you look at integrating OBIE, you're going to need to think about, you know, what's my analytic workflow and how do I go from my top level down and how do I enable my salespeople to get information they need and what's important. What I'm going to focus on is more of a technical demo that shows you from an OBIE perspective how you can navigate within the product and not have to worry about where the data sits. Give me a second here, I need to uh, share. And what I'm going to show you, this is a, Oracle has a virtual box application, which is their, their uh, virtual machine that they've built, and it has OBIE, and it has SBase, it has uh, some other Oracle tools like Oracle Lab, Oracle Data Mining, uh, Data Integrator, and so on. And it's built for the purpose of helping people understand how their tool works, and um, it does so, it has, you know, dashboards out for a lot of specific things. I'm going to focus on the integration of multiple data sources, uh, including SBase, and how that works with an OBIE. And so what I've done is I've come, come to their Oracle SBase dashboard, which is specifically built to highlight um, the integration of OBIE with, with SBase. And page one is a simple report. It's standard SBase. There's nothing fancy here um, other than, you know, you can drill drill down hierarchies and things like that. But what I want to do is go to the other tabs, and the tab I want to go to is first is drill the relational. And this is going to show you how from within um, OBIEE, what I'm looking at is a dashboard that is sourced from three different types of data sources. So we're going to see it's got information pulling from a relational database, from a flat XML file, as well as um, other data sources and SBase. So at a high level, everything um, you in, in white is pulled from an SBase cube. But as I expand down my time hierarchy, what I'm going to see is that when I go down a week, I'm actually pulling information from the relational database. And when I'm looking at the um, month, I'm getting information from um, a flat file. But as an end user, I don't need to know this. I just need to know I want to look at my, go from, you know, my, my quarter down to my month period down to my week, and I don't care where the data comes from, but uh, behind the scenes, this is all being handled for me seamlessly. Second thing I'm going to show you is source blending, and this shows me the ability to actually, within a single report, show information come from different sources. So in this report, it's a very simple report again, but I have information, for example, revenue coming from a uh, database queue. But I also have quantity coming from relational tables. And then I have unit price, which is coming from both. So again, as an end user, I don't have to worry about where the data is. I just come into my report, navigate, and behind the scenes, it's taken care of it. And the last thing I'll show you is navigate to relational, which is similar to what I show you, you with the screenshots. Um, where basically, I'm looking at an S-based report, I can click on it, and I can navigate to relational target or to an S-based target. So the big thing here is that OBIE provides, and the BI Foundation Suite provides the foundation to actually enable this navigation easily across these data sources. The work here is in you know, identifying and understanding your analytic workflow and designing these dashboards to navigate across those, those systems um, from, a, from a business perspective. Second thing I'm going to show you is uh, scorecards. And again, you know, what I'm showing you is this is the OBI interface, but this is all part of the BI Foundation Suite, which includes SBase and the scorecards and OBIEE. We talked earlier about, you know, the need to link, you know, your strategic goals with your initiatives and to push, you know, the metrics that you're tracking from a high level down to metrics that are relevant at an individual, you know, functional area or location level. 
And in the BI Foundation Suite, uh, the scorecarding capabilities are really geared just for this. So you can build a scorecard and you can show, you know, how does things tie together from, uh, you know, if my goal is to enhance customer satisfaction, what are the, you know, some of the metrics tied to it. In this case, they've identified, you know, shipping things early, fulfilling my orders on time. That's all, you know, tied into customer satisfaction. You can also look at a strategy map. And if you're familiar with balance scorecards, it's going to be uh, similar to that where I've identified the different uh, perspectives and what are the key metrics on that and how do they tie together. Yeah. And uh, one thing that you know you notice that right away they're color coded, so I can quickly see which ones I'm, I'm executing well on, which ones I'm not. Um, it allows the ability to actually drill down into more detail um, from this screen as well as others. Uh, the other thing we'll look at is a, is a uh, cause and effect map. And again, this shows kind of the relationships between the different metrics and the specific uh, high-level goals that we're trying to track. And the KPI, last one I'm going to show you is KPI watch list, which is just a summary, summary view. But basically, you know, the scorecarding gives you a lot of capabilities to really start looking at things more holistically and with alignment between the different levels of organizations and the functions that have to execute on your plan versus, you know, the uh, people at the top that are really just monitoring it uh, and then want to know why and, you know, where we're off. So that's pretty much what I was going to show you. There's a lot more to um, the BI Foundation Suite than we've touched on here. Uh, this is more of a, you know, help you understand how to tie the, the planning and the execute and assess together and um, put your finance organization in, in a position to actually more easily integrate the data and, and kind of rise to the challenges you're facing as an organization in terms of uh, disparate data and, and then dispersing it. So at this point, I'm going to turn it back over to, to John. We're going to talk about how to achieve the benefits. Thanks, Dave. That was a pretty pretty comprehensive uh, run through of how to integrate your plan, execute, and assess model across the organization. Um, we get this question all the time. Um, you know, where is where is um, where am I going from a financial organization? Where am I going from an overall organization perspective? And how do I implement these types of things? Dave shows you one example of um, doing sub-ledger reporting, which is a nice um, strategic or more tactical type of initiative, a way to get up and running. But what we seem to be most successful is just to identify a key strategic initiative and define the analytic workflow. So the analytic workflow that uh, Dave showed you was just simple. You know, any time in your HFM, into your general ledger, pulling that around and mechanizing a process that had typically been a manual type of process. And what that particular client did was they aligned their data with their EPM and their BI strategy from an Oracle perspective with their analytic workflow, and they've taken an integrated approach. The first phase was to, first phase was to integrate both um, <coughs> HFM, S-Base, and the GL, um, and they have further phases going forward. That's one approach to doing it. Um, we can help you there. Um, you can ex engage in experienced resources. who's done this before. There's a lot of people process technology issues in implementing these types of solutions. Um, we have experience in doing EPM, OBI, and BI Foundation Suite. And uh, we actually have an offering called Clear Vision, which kind of does the same approach, identifies the gaps, builds a cost-benefit analysis, puts together a high-level phase roadmap, and then provides a working model of your analytic solution. We've found that successful with our clients to ensure their success. So with that, that's the um, prepared portion of um, the webinar. Thank you for everybody being here today. Well, I have up on the screen here um, our email information. It's jschmidt at clearlinegroup.com and Dave Atatangelo at clearlinegroup.com. Feel free to email us with any additional questions or comments.